Hello, in this video I'll be introducing you to the equations of motion, which are often known as the SUVAT equations, after the first initials of after the symbols that are used to represent the quantities involved. These are the situations in which you can use the equations of motion. You must have constant acceleration in a straight line. The gravitational field must be uniform, which we can assume to be true for almost anything on the Earth. And we always assume that there is no air resistance. There are five equations of motion, of which you must be able to use four at air level. The SUVAT equations use the following quantities. S for displacement, U to represent the initial velocity of the object, V to represent the final velocity of the object, A to represent acceleration, and T to represent time. These must be in SI units, so displacement in metres, initial velocity in metres per second, final velocity in metres per second, acceleration in metres per second squared, and time in seconds. There are five SUVAT equations, of which four are necessary at air level. V equals U plus AT. The final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. S equals UT plus a half AT squared. S equals a half multiplied by U plus V multiplied by T. And the fifth equation, which it is worth being aware of, S equals VT minus a half AT squared. But it is these first four that appear in the air level specification. And so you should be able to answer any questions you come across using just those four equations. SUVAT questions don't have to be difficult as long as you work carefully through the steps. Let's begin with an example. A rock is dropped off a cliff and takes 0.9 seconds to hit the sea. How high is the cliff? Well, the first thing to do with any SUVAT question is to write out SUVAT. S, U, V, A, T. And now we need to assign values to these five unknowns. So S, well S is what we're trying to find out, that the displacement from, the, from where the rock is dropped to the bottom of the cliff, that would be the height of the cliff, so that is what we're looking for. U is our initial velocity. The rock is being held and then released. At the beginning of its journey, it has a velocity of zero meters per second. V, is the final velocity as the rock hits the water. The question doesn't ask us to find this out, nor does it tell us what this is. So I'm going to put a cross there to say we don't care about what V is in this question. A is the acceleration due to gravity, that is 9.81 metres per second squared. And the time is given to us in the question 0.9 seconds. Now we need to look back at our equations of motion and choose the most appropriate for this question. So we know u, a and t and we want to find out s. The easiest thing to do is to look for the quantity that is not involved here v so we cannot use any of the equations that have v in so that rules out our first equation there, our second equation and our fourth equation. The only equation that will work here is s equals ut plus a half at squared. The next stage is usually to rearrange this equation so that the subject is what we're looking for. But fortunately here, it already is. So s equals ut plus a half at squared. So s equals 0 multiplied by 0 0.9. Obviously that part will be 0 overall plus a half multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by t squared, so that's 0 0.9 squared. Obviously this first part, 0 to 0 0.9 is 0, leaving us with the remainder here, which is 3.97 metres. Let's try a slightly more difficult example. This time we have a car travelling at 10 metres per second and the driver sees a hazard ahead and brakes. The car decelerates at 6 metres per second squared to a complete stop. What distance does the car travel while braking? In other words, the braking distance of the car. 
So again, we start always. No matter how experienced and skillful you are at SUVAT, it's always worth rigorously working through these steps. So let's begin with S, U, V, A, and T. Now once again, actually, S is our unknown. U is our initial velocity here, which is 10 meters per second. V is our final velocity, which we know to be zero because the car has come to a complete stop. Our acceleration is a deceleration. In other words, it must be a negative acceleration. So this is minus 6.0 meters per second squared. And our time, we don't care about. That's not part of the question. So once again, we look at our equations of motion. We're looking for an equation that does not have t in it. So that rules out the first equation. The second equation could work. The third equation has t, so that's no good. And so does the fourth equation. So we're going to be using v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So let's write that out. v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Now we need to rearrange this. So if we subtract u squared from both sides, get v squared minus u squared equals 2as. And we want s to be the subject here. So we can now divide both sides by 2a. And that will leave us with s equals v squared minus u squared divided by 2a. So let's plug our values in. v is 0, so we could begin with 0 squared. Take away u, which is 10. So 10 squared divided by 2 multiplied by our acceleration here, which is minus 6.0. And if we work that out on our calculator, we get an answer of 8.33 meters. Let's try just one more example. This time a tennis ball is thrown vertically upwards to a height of four meters. What was the ball's initial velocity? At first glance, this question may look like it doesn't have quite enough information. As always, let's begin by writing out our SUVAT. So S here is four meters. That is the vertical displacement of the ball. U is the initial velocity. That's what we're trying to find out. So we'll put a question mark there. V is the final velocity. The question doesn't directly mention this, but if you think about it, a ball that is thrown upwards will reach its maximum height at the point where its velocity is zero just before it starts to fall back down. So our final velocity here is zero. This is the kind of thought process that's very important when solving projectile motion questions. Now the acceleration is due to gravity, but we need to be careful with the direction. When I said that the displacement was four meters, positive four meters, I've implied that vertically upwards is our positive direction. Therefore, because the acceleration is acting downwards, it must be negative minus 9.81 meters per second squared. And our time, we don't know about and we don't care about. Once again, let's have a look at our equations of motion. We're looking again for an equation that doesn't have t in it. And we found before that the equation of choice here would need to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And we're trying to find u. So we need to rearrange our equation to make u the subject. Let's begin by subtracting from both sides minus 2as, leaving us with u squared equals v squared minus 2as. And then we'll need to take a square root of both sides in order to get u equals the square root of v squared minus 2as. All that remains now is to plug in our values. v is 0. Take away 2 multiplied by minus 9.81 multiplied by 4 meters and we will take the square root of that whole thing 
that would give us an answer for the initial velocity of 8.86 meters per second. So just a quick reminder of the steps to success for CVAT equations. Always begin by writing out what you know. Then choose from your possible CVAT equations, looking for the equation that does not have the value you're not interested in, in this case t. Then rearrange the equation to make the subject your unknown, in this case u, and plug in the values to find the final answer.